Let's see, Mr. Louis, thank you very much for that very comprehensive and very interesting overview. And let me just say to our audience, dear ladies and gentlemen, this is now an opportunity for you to pose your questions, both uh, to Mr. Louis and also to State Secretary Kastrup. Please use our a question window for that. You'll see it right below the chat window on your screens on the right hand side. And you can also send a short commentary via the chat if you like. And we do just have a couple of questions that have already come in. So I will, uh, I will pose those to our speakers. Um, and the first uh, question that has come in to us from a, I presume, student or perhaps professor or faculty at the University of Indonesia is this. Consumer activities in the digital age are besieged by growing problems related to the complexity, opacity, and uncertainty around the use of personal data, as well as misleading, unethical, and fraudulent commercial practices. What are the challenges that consumer rights protection uh, is facing in the digital age? Dear State Secretary, perhaps you want to list, let's say, the top three, because that is a very big question. <laughs> and I think this is the real big question we, we all face uh, and I think uh, what is mentioned here is really I think uh, the entire core of what we need to tackle and uh, I think my first takeaway is something which was already mentioned uh, by my predecessor in speaking um, I think and this is really the international cooperation I think uh, if we have complexity opacity uncertainty we really try to strive for a kind of a global understanding what do we mean with that and this is not uh, just a quick and fast shot. I think this would really uh, also need that we discuss uh, our societies, how they are working, how can we empower people, uh, how can we give control, and this is one very important issue, that the really the, those who give the data, who deliver the data, uh, and this is of course very useful that they give the data, they deliver them, I think they have to, people have to be safe that they are not used against them, uh, either in, a, in a breaching the privacy, or the other issue, um, make economic models uh, of natural monopolies, which in the end uh, will destroy competition and then also consumer benefits. So we really need to bring this on a global level in the end. Of course, we have all to do our homework, but then we should discuss it in the, in the international fora with the help of the G20, with the help of the OECD. Uh, I think this is all, uh, this is, I think, my message to tackle this flower pot <laughs> which was presented here uh, by, uh, by, the, by the question. Thank you very much and I want to come back uh, and dig a little bit deeper uh, in a moment on the question of international cooperation but first of all to Mr. Louis the same question you also outlined a broad range of risks which are the main ones that really keep you up at night uh, as in your in your capacity as head of division? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I, I think one, one of the main challenges is uh, really the mastery of technology. Um, we are very concerned because uh, for whatever legislative approaches and, and also the strategy that we implement, uh, we are we would try not to be like, you know, one step behind what the perpetrators are doing in terms of the deployment of their technology. Apparently, uh, we should uh, ensure that our, our technology is actually moving faster and ahead of the uh, perpetrator and, and the organized crimes because uh, they, they, they do have uh, access and deep pockets and they're able to ensure that uh, these technologies would be able to, to, to be used to manipulate and, and also to avoid and circumvent all the uh, steps that we might take to try to uh, stop them and, and, and enforce the, the laws that we have uh, um, sort of a past. But, ad, but ad, other than that also, uh, the consumers themselves must also play a very strong role. And I think this is when education is very important to start off right uh, from very, very young, because I uh, understand that uh, if there are really issues such as this, which is very challenging, and, and I saw, then, then, then we really need to uh, start them off like, you know, at a very young age to, to understand that uh, when you deal with the internet e e e e economy and all that, uh, you have to ensure that uh, your common sense is not being surrendered. And then uh, if you sense there's, there's red flags, you must be able to, to act on it and, and, and to know when not to trust 
the uh, website that you're on. And but more, 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 more importantly also is uh, because uh, in terms of the consumers, in terms of numbers, uh, there's so many of us, uh, you know, and I believe, uh, and, and also we have so much more res resources than those who want to abuse and manipulate this system. I believe in the longer term, we should be able to win this game and, and not to allow them to exploit us. Thank you. Mr. Louis, can I just ask you one follow-up on the issue of uh, raising public awareness and providing consumers with more information? That is a key part of your strategy, and you outlined the different aspects uh, of that. Are you concerned, though, about information overload? Is there a point at which um, are there limits to empowering consumers by providing more information? I fully uh, appreciate your questions, Ms. Crane. Uh, yeah, in, in fact, uh, what I have in mind is, uh, re 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 I mean, really not about just, uh, uh, you know, just pouring information and then overloading them, but uh, really to help to address these information at the most basic level, like for example, uh, developing an icon. When you look at a particular icon, uh, or a red flag, or maybe one or two words, you know. Mr. Louis, I'm just going to interrupt you there because we are having some breakup. Maybe uh, we're going to give your uh, online uh, connection a chance to uh, restore itself, and I will uh, go briefly to the state secretary. Mr. Louis, I don't know if you can hear me, but uh, there we go. Better. Okay, I think we're going to work on improving your connection. Let me just pose the same question to State, State Secretary Castro. Uh, State Secretary, clearly there are risks associated with information overload. What would you say are the most crucial pieces of information we need to get to consumers, and how can we uh, avoid overloading them with information and thereby undermining the goal of raising awareness? Yeah, I think the most important information uh, the consumer may need is what is happening uh, with his behavior in the digital rooms. So, and this is about data, uh, this is about leaving a trace uh, in the digital rooms and uh, that this is then reused. And I think this is all the critical things. So this will empower artificial intelligence, but this will also empower via artificial intelligence and learning machines uh, also kind of endangering your privacy. It will put you into uh, dark patterns. Uh, you can be manipulated. You see, there is no public curation uh, within the internet. Uh, you have just to rely on the safety itself. There is a general regulation. But I think the main issue would be what is happening with the information and the traces you leave in the internet. Uh, you can do this, of course, a bit with empowerment and literacy, but we may also need a kind of a societal structure for that. So uh, what institutions in the digital room can help the individual consumers maybe also for a kind of a collective redress? And this, of course, can be the state, uh, the public, but uh, I think most important is probably that we also have an institutional design in the digital rooms, on the platforms, within the platforms, where you have a kind of a collective redress possibility, for instance, uh, via uh, data trustees or data intermediaries, who may also be able to check algorithms which are used on you. Uh, so I think we need this public oversight, we need regulation, empowerment, digital literacy, but we may also need a new, say, societal institutional design uh, in the digital rooms where people can go at it also quickly. You see, if it's about regulation and the law, this will take time. Now, it's necessary to have a regulation, to have a law, but uh, much more important is that consumers, civil society can immediately react uh, to fraudulent uh, issues, to unsafe products or to dark patterns. 
Thank you very much. Let me try and see whether Mr. Louis's connection is uh, is better now. Mr. Louis, unfortunately, I stopped you in midstream there. If your connection's better, you're welcome to pick up where you left off in regard to the potential of information overload for consumers. And I would add another question as well, because the state secretary just talked about the importance of ensuring that business uh, adhere also to codes of conduct. You yourself mentioned that. But I would have a similar question on that point, which is how far voluntary codes of conduct really take us. Of course, there are a lot of economic incentives for business to use some of the uh, manipulative devices we're talking about. So perhaps join up your answer on voluntary codes of conduct for business with information uh, uh, and public awareness for consumers. Yeah. Uh Thank you very much. As far as uh, voluntary uh, compliance is concerned, of course, uh, that would definitely be a place in which we can start by uh, uh, developing awareness first on the part of the consumers and also the need on the part of the businesses to ensure that their practices are comply with certain international standards. Uh, it will have to be a graduated and step-by-step -step approach. You, you can't just go straight in and uh, start to impose uh, laws and making it mandatory and, and it also takes a long time as well there's a need to develop of course some kind of a culture a culture of um, awareness of uh, ethical uh, behavior not only on, on the part of the businesses but also whoever that access the in internet for the purposes of the various uh, business transactions that they go into and and insofar as uh, building awareness is concerned of course um, a, a very important aspect of it is um, our own common sense. Um, whilst it is Im important to have a lot of uh, activities and education and awareness as uh, being uh, carried out in the environment, we must also rely and actually believe in our own intuition, our own uh, judgment, and also our and and also to to, to know that uh, we are able to tell when we are going to be uh, take, taken in for for the ride. So um, it is it is important to uh, highlight those education, but it's also important to um, build their confidence within their personal uh, assessment of the uh, digital environment around them. Uh, and finally, I, I suppose I just want to add that uh, we, we are not alone as far as the consumers are concerned. There's a need for peer references. There's a, a need for us to check with our friends, uh, check with our com communities and neighbors if we come across, uh, like for example, a, a deal which is like too good to be true, chances are it is going to be too good to, to be be true and all, and, and all that. And, and so we should uh, re refrain from parting with our monies and, and all that. And a lot of these are really just uh, common sense to begin with. Uh, and so, sometimes it's very unfortunate to, to hear of uh, a lot of uh, uh, the, the vulnerable and the, mar the mar marginal, uh, you know, falling prey to all this. But uh, I believe the um, in, in information and campaign must continue to be done, not only just in the main languages, but also in the uh, local languages as well in the local languages, because like in ASEAN, we've got like uh, many, many different types of languages and communities. And this takes time to be uh, tra translated. And I, I believe that the work has to be continued on, uh, on a regular basis. Thank you. Thank you very much. And let me now, in our remaining time, pick up just a little bit on that theme of international cooperation and how we can share best practices. Uh, at the end of Mr. Louis's remarks, uh, dear State Secretary, he talked about uh, looking to see what might be relevant for ASEAN, uh, for Southeast Asia, within the new scope of the EU approach in the Digital Service Act and the Digital Markets Act. Perhaps you could just delve a bit deeper for us, if you would, as to where you see the sort of centerpiece of those two approaches and what you think might be uh, transferable to a different set of cultural circumstances? What's the heart of the matter that perhaps could transcend regional differences? Yeah, that's a tricky question, and it's not uh, that easy to answer, to be very honest. Uh, but of, nevertheless, I think uh, if we start uh, with the Digital Services Act, I think there are two main issues at stake. Uh, one is uh, what we discuss here mainly. Uh, this is the so-called transaction side. Uh, it's what was happening on trading platforms. Um, I think there, of course, it's really important 
that the big uh, global players really uh, take on their own uh, responsibility here. So it's about the liability and the, the great platforms cannot just say we just bring demand and supply together. We are kind of a neutral intermediary as these platforms also start to produce own products and I think they have to take some uh, say so consumer protection on themselves and they cannot just say we are free of any liability what is happening on our platform and I think this is one issue for sure I think uh, which will uh, be true also for the Asian countries uh, as well so that's 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 one part and I think then uh, this is then all about uh, um, micro tracking on advertising on dark patterns which was already mentioned here uh, in the room. The other side I would like to highlight is the so-called interaction side and this is a bit about hate speech, uh, bullying in the net, uh, that people are getting were forced in the end for instance to drop out and say I, I do leave the, the, the digital discourse and this is so-called silencing so uh, and this is why we are very eager uh, to have a tight control also in this societal uh, dangerous developments that people are bullied within the net, they are hate messages, uh, even threats posed on them and I think this is another issue uh, we really need to control and this has something to do what we also discuss on the European level, what is to be uh, notice and take down. Yeah? Remember what happened uh, in the United States for instance with some comments of the former president there. So I think uh, this is really an issue which has probably a bit more intercultural differentiation. I'm very well aware of that. Uh, so there is no one size fits all solution. But I think uh, we all want to have stable uh, societies where you can live in the digital rooms uh, without being endangered or forced out. I think this would then also hamper the societal discourse. And last point maybe on a very uh, global level and I think this will also be discussed uh, uh, by Monika Schnitzer later here is about there is a certain relation also of a functioning digital services act uh, for global competition. Mm -hmm. So there is also an issue there that, that a well done consumer protection can also help uh, to control uh, say um, market positions which are have a monopolic uh, structure and which will then in the end hamper uh, consumer benefits and consumer rents. Thank you very much. Let me go to Mr. Louis and ask for your response to that. And what we're essentially hearing is that uh, we can't simply uh, assume that roles in uh, the, the digital space uh, are analog to what we know in the real world, but we're, we're, we're hearing from the state secretary, we need to really take a look at the functional role that different actors play and, uh, and how they interrelate in the digital space, particularly in regard to digital marketplaces, uh, online marketplaces. Does that resonate with you? And what kind of challenges does that pose for policymakers in Southeast Asia? Well, of course, uh, over in South, Southeast Asia, unlike the European Union, uh, we, we, we don't have a union, but we have got an association of 10 different countries, 10 different set of laws. So, of course, uh, what we are doing now is to develop some those domestic legislation so that approximate uh, some, some kind of a convergence. Maybe we get a longer view of having a uh, more unified kind of laws. So, um, the strategy is concerned to, to contain and to address the scourge in the digital economy. So it's not going to be a uh, uh, you know one particular stakeholder. It's, it's, it's going to be a, a holistic uh, partnership involving both the platform owners, the, the brand owners, the um, consumers themselves, the government agencies, and also all the various intersectoral um, uh, government agencies for, for, for the purposes of ensuring that uh, we are working hand in hand and, and with, with a broad vision to try to, um, to, try to address this curse because uh, the, 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 the parties and the opposite people that we are working at are the organized crimes. 
and they are very well organized. So we, we have to be uh, more organized than that and then because we, we do have a lot of resources and then we do have all the various uh, uh, st strategies and, so those, and also the regional platform for this to happen. So uh, I believe in, in, in the longer term, the uh, this platform and, and also the challenges of the digital e economy can be addressed provided that we work together and, and not uh, think only about our own self-interest and also our self uh, in interest from the point of view of business or whatever. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Louis Tech Keong, head of division at the ASEAN Secretariat, for sharing your thoughts with us. And I, I would like to also say uh, to the uh, audience that I'm sorry that sometimes uh, we had some dropout on that line. Nonetheless, you have shared with us very, very interesting uh, thoughts about where ASEAN is going in this very critical area. And I'd also like to thank State Secretary Kastrup for sharing best practices and for giving us an overview on what is being done here in Germany and Europe to enhance consumer protection, particularly in connection with online marketplaces. So, dear ladies and gentlemen, we now have an opportunity to take a break. Uh, I so much wish that we were all together and we we could enjoy some fellowship while we perhaps get a bit of refreshment. But we will take this break virtually and reconvene here in exactly 15 minutes to dive deeper on the issue of how we empower consumers, how we provide them with the information that they need to make truly informed decisions in online marketplaces. So come back in 15 minutes, please, for that very interesting session. See you shortly.